welcome to yoga. I woke up this morning, my sacrum was a little bit sore from heavy legs yesterday. Uh, we were filming classes this evening, so I sat down and worked out a little series that I thought was really restorative for my sacrum, and I ended up coming up with something that's really a gem here. So here's a nice little restorative sacrum opener. It's gonna take about 15 minutes for you to do. Starting on the back, with what Bikram calls wind removing, just simply bringing one knee into the shoulder. All these postures tight and compact, flexing the toes back in the left leg, trying to bring the complete left leg on the ground. My elbows are close, my chin is tucked, and I'm stretching through my left heel as I'm pulling my right knee into my shoulder. So I'm really getting a nice opening through my quadratus lumbar, my QL, it's right behind your kidney in the low back. A little stretch through the sacrum. We're just kind of warming up here. We don't want to go too deep right away. And this is kind of intended for people that have a little bit of maybe a sensitive low back or even some pretty severe low back issues. So you're going to really listen to your body as you're going through this sequence this evening and do no harm. We want a nice little restore of it opening. We're not looking to rip the door off of the hinges with our practice. Releasing the right leg down, left leg up. Again, flexing the toes back at the right leg. Elbows in close, chin tucked. So again, I'm reaching through my right heel. I'm kind of exaggerating a little bit so you can see on the film. And I'm pulling my knee in. So I'm going a little bit deeper than I normally go here just to really show the motion. But elbows in, pushing through the heel, pulling my knee into the shoulder. My right shoulder's down. I'm trying to keep the shoulders down away from the ears as I'm practicing so I'm not tensing the shoulders up or pulling with traps. Just nice and it's just really kind of using biceps to pull it in, not using a lot of other bigger, larger muscle groups. And release the left leg down. It's an option to bring both knees into the chest. I kind of like to do it. So the goal, if you're bringing both knees into the chest, we're going to kind of try to keep the knees as close as comfortable, grabbing the opposite elbows. I'm tucking my chin. I'm not worried about how close my tailbone is to the mat right now. The base of my neck is on the floor. And I'm flattening my back one vertebra at a time from my upper back through my middle thoracic spine. And then just eventually the whole spine on the ground. But right now, that's as low as I'm going to come. And I'm intentionally doing this class tight right now so I can really feel it and really show where the work is. If I'm really flexible, it's not as easy to see where my work is. If I'm really loose, the tailbone's going to come down a little bit further. And then today, you could release speaker style up to the ceiling and lower, but today I'm just going to release my legs down. And this is really important as we're doing this work, is to get a full release. Between each of these postures we do, this is just really important. I'll kind of rock my sacrum a little bit here, just to make sure I'm losing any tension up from the body. And this is typically called happy baby. You can grab the feet from the inside or outside. I was trained to grab them, and I'm comfortable grabbing them on the outside for multiple reasons. One is it's so much more likely that the ankles are going to bow out than in. We want to stack right over the knees, so it's easier for me to focus on stacking my ankle joints over my knees when I'm grabbing from the outside, thumbs with fingers, and just point straight down. So this posture is intended for the sacrum, but it's really common. We're going to feel it in the hips and the thighs, especially if you're tight there, which is a really common place to be tight in our Western society, especially hips. So a kick. I'm really kicking strongly into my arms as I'm pulling the knees down. This tension is bringing it into my sacrum. If I wasn't kicking here, I would just feel it in my hips and thighs right now. But I'm able to really get a nice width of my sacrum by intentionally bringing it there with the kick and with the pull. But I'm going to be repetitive. I'm, I'm intending to bring this posture into my sacrum right now and not just leave it in the hips and in the thighs. And this could be a real nice little sacrum opener. Getting, so we're starting out by getting width in the lower back. It's really common forward bends and things like this that bring length into it. We want to bring some width into it, give it some space. So important, especially if you have a strong kick, release the tension first. I've released the tension, stretching the legs out. And again, this release is so important here. We don't just want to move right on to another posture. This release is at least as important as the posture we just completed. Just a nice release. And then you can do a Bikram transitional sit up, bring your arms over the diving for the toes. Or if you're a little bit sensitive or even injured in the sacrum, you just roll over to the side, push yourself up, and come to a seated position. From here, we'll come to what's called Baddha Konasana. That's a bound angle pose, interlacing the fingers. Different systems do this differently. Some systems like the heels real close to the body. Some systems further out. It's wherever you're feeling it. I've been teaching yoga for 20 years, doing it my whole life, and everybody feels this in a little different place. I'm right about here. So there's a, there's a couple different ways to do this. We can do it actively, where I'm going to 
lift. So I'm pulling with my arms, and I'm lifting my chest up and forward. But really what I'm doing is pulling my lower abdomen towards my heels right now. So it looks like this. I mean, I'm going to exaggerate. So I'm really pulling with my biceps, the chest up, lower abdomen towards my heels. And again, I'm feeling width in the sacrum, working my knees down, but not forcing anything. Never ripping the door off the hinges, just easing it open through process, through practice. So I'll spend a couple of moments here. This isn't a, this isn't a really long hold here. And then from here, this really active, we can get a little passive and long by just kind of stretching the hands out over and rounding forward. And you want to be a little careful with this one if you're, if you're sensitive in the sacrum. I'm really feeling this in my sacrum right now. And it, it will open up if we stay a little longer, but this is about where I want to be right now. What's important is what the posture's doing for you, not practicing with ego with a sense of false flexibility or forcing yourself into postures to look a certain way. But we really want to always think about what the posture is doing for you. And this is a restorative practice, so we're not doing any harm here at all. We're going to err on the side of caution. Maybe 80, 90 percent. We don't want to go to that 101 percent. And releasing the tension again from this posture first. Just stretching the legs out. I just like to do a little. I'll just kind of shake my sacrum out to release it here. And we'll do quad stretch next. So. Some people are going to ask, why are we doing a quad stretch if this is a restorative sacrum class? Because tight quads are a major, major source of low back problems, major source. So we want to have nice loose quads. This is the best quad stretch I know. There are a couple other ones. If this hurts your knee, there's uh, what's called a uh, preparation for splits that, or Hanuman that works well. You could probably Google it if you wanted to. So we just take a couple of moments of the stretch on both legs. It's really common if you're tight around the knees, the tendons and ligaments around the knees will stretch a little bit. You've got to be really careful with them. But my knees, where I'm really feeling this right now, I usually feel it more in my quad than my knee. But I'm feeling it open. I'm also feeling it kind of open up. So by the time I do this, if I were to do a second set, I probably wouldn't feel it in my knee anymore. But we want to be really careful with that knee joint. I'm going to be repetitive. The tendons and ligaments around the knee will stretch out a little bit. But we've got to be really careful with them. And just a little bit of time on each leg here. And really, for those of you that have sacrum issues, the best thing that you can do for your lower back, well, one of the best things is strong abs. It's a really big deal. I know that Claudia, we have a couple of core classes. Claudia did a core ab class. Um, st strong abs, flexible sacrum, loose quads, that you're working in the right direction if you're working those three things. But strong abs are a big deal. They're doing about 70% of the work just when we're standing erect, maybe 80, depending on your posture. And when I'm standing straight up, I'm always thinking about engaging my abs a little bit. I've always got a little bit of a mula and a uddiyana bandha happening all the time, 24-7 when I'm standing. I'll just lift my pubic bone, the navel a little bit, take pressure off my sacrum. I've kind of trained myself to do it over the years. And from here, this is a stretch that's kind of popular in CrossFit these days. It's really not a traditional yoga stretch, but it works really good here, so we're going to do it. So it's called a, uh, I've heard it called a 90-90 stretch before. I don't know. We'll call it 90-90 for today. So I'm going to set it up like this. My legs at a 90 degree angle. And basically, I'm going to set my body up over my, my right thigh like I'm going to stretch forward, but I'm not. So I'm setting it up like this, 90 degree angle. And then I'm going to stretch this way with it. And I'm going to reach my arm over here, really as far as I can look back. So I'm looking back to the corner of the room and just really bringing this nicely into my QL. This feels so good for me right now. Length all down the left side. We're getting a nice little lat stretch here. It's not really the intent. The intent is to bring it more into the QL and sacrum area, but I'm feeling it all through the left side of my body, getting a little bit of a hip opener here. And it all, you know, it's all attached, it all goes together. So this just really feels nice for me right now. I could stay here for quite a while. We just want the inhales to create a little bit of space. And then exhales, releasing into the posture. If you can work your way a little deeper, that's fine. So again, inhales are creating space and just really finding that nice release on the exhales. Letting all the tension go. And just easing a little bit deeper. But the key is easing deeper, not forcing. Coming back up. Again, always releasing carefully. Same thing on the other side. And 
Oh, so this is kind of a new stretch for me. I have not, I, this is not a posture I grew up doing, but it's just really an effective sacrum stretch. And at the ashram, I care about what's effective. We want to stay as traditional as possible, but this is just a really effective stretch. And again, I'm really getting that nice reach with my right hand. Feels completely different on this side. It's really, really common. One side of the body can be completely different. We're never trying to make one side match the other. We treat them as individuals and just do our work on each side to 100%. So a lot tighter here through my QL. I'm not feeling as much in my lat. I'm just kind of trying to, with my left hand, I'm pushing my left shoulder up a little bit as I'm easing the right side of my body, low and long. So I'm kind of pushing up with my left hand to give me a little bit of space to reach out. And feeling this all down the right side of my back into my sacrum. Really nice QL stretch. And finding my way back up, supporting myself back up to release. Again, this is really key in this whole thing. We want to take that moment for release. Lots of benefit happening here. It feels so much better already. And ending with a nice straddle stretch. So we have not done a lot of forward bending. In fact, we haven't done any forward bending. People kind of just go into an automatic uh, way of thinking with sacrum stuff, forward bend, forward bend, forward bend. Yeah, forward bends are great for low back issues, but too much is not. We want to get that width in there, space high, long, wide. We want to get the whole, whole back open. So this is a nice little forward bend here, creating some width at the same time through the sacrum, opening up the hips. And when I do this posture, again, I'm, I'm really thinking about lifting my chest and pulling my body forward. So I'm not just, I'm not doing this. I'm not resting here. It's not a passive posture. I'm not collapsing. I'm really pulling my spine along and working my low abdomen towards the floor. So inhales creating space and pulling into the posture and exhales releasing into it and just kind of settling in. Inhales creating some space and pulling, see me going a little deeper. And then finding my way back up and I'd probably stay there a little bit more. If I were just doing this on my own, that's about half as long as I'd probably stay there. And then we'll bring it side to side. Again, really bring it into QL. And it doesn't matter how far you're coming. It can just be this much. It can be this much. Some of you are going to be able to bring your body all the way over your leg and come down. This is where I am today. And I'm not looking for just the forward bend of some really flexible people who just kind of forward bend over the leg. I'm looking for this nice opening through my QL with the reach. So I'm getting that right here. I'm going to pull with my left arm a little bit, but it just depends on where your flexibility is. You can pull with your left arm here a little bit if you wanted to. But we really want to, again, get it down right behind the kidney and the right side of the low back is where I'm wanting to feel the stretch right now. And that is where I'm feeling it, right in, the, right in my QL. QL is a big deal in yoga. QL and psoas work together. Psoas is deep. If you've ever had a massage and they go in through your lower abdomen, that's your psoas, very painful. So again, this side, I'm just really looking at feeling. I, I don't have any ego goal or any preconceived idea of how far I'm going to go into the posture because of what I did yesterday or the day before. I'm just really feeling where I need to be right now in the posture. And that's just right about here on this side. And this side is significantly tighter, again, today than the other side is. It's kind of common. I have a hamstring injury when I was very young that has really never completely healed. It's kind of, if you pop that hamstring, it's pretty tough. You've got to take a lot of time to take care of it. So again, really trying to bring this into my QL with the reach. I'm starting to open up a little bit. Inhales, creating space, lift. So I'm trying to lift the chest again. It's always this lengthening, always lifting, lengthening. I'm always lifting. I'm always working my low abdomen down and forward. I go a little deeper now. So pulling with my right arm, pulling with my pull. I'm pulling with the right arm. I'm pulling with my left arm. But it's not a rip the door off the hinges pull. It's just a nice, smooth, consistent opening pull. Lifting my left shoulder down. So I'm going to be repetitive again here. I'm really trying to work my low abdomen down is what I'm, I'm lifting my chest to work the lower abdomen. This doesn't matter to me at all. It could be way up here. It depends on your flexibility. We could be out here. It doesn't matter. This is just where I'm feeling it today. And again, some of y'all that are really flexible are just going to twist over your leg and that's fine too. Where do you need to be? And I can open up a little bit more here. So just for kicks, I'll open it up and just kind of go forward one last time. I like to end with a nice, long, straight back. 
Sticking them over there. This is really important. The deeper you're in the stretch, the longer you stay in it. We ease our way into the asana. We ease our way back out. So it's not just pull your legs back together. It's just really feeling the benefit of the release here. Just releasing those attachments, windshield wiping them out a little bit. Sometimes I'll just take one leg and shake it out. Just to make sure I'm as loose as I can be, just like someone shaking their arms out. So why don't you just be as loose as we can be right now. Loosey-goosey, all the way back to the middle. And loosey, loosey, loosey. And I like to really just be able to kind of feel the weight of my legs after a good leg stretch or a little back stretch. So I'm just looking to feel it there. This one's a little, you can see, this one's loose. Let's hold it. So I'm just going to, that's better. Weight of legs. Yeah. Dead body pose, namaste. Namaste. 